Japan and Korea have one of the best rivalries in all of international baseball. In terms of sheer intensity, it's on the level of Yankees Red Sox or Giants Dodgers. And the two sides will duke it out again in the 2023 World Baseball Classic in a game that will likely determine the winner of Pool B. Now, you can't talk about the history of the Japan-Korea baseball rivalry without recognizing the political history of the two countries. This is a baseball channel, so I'm not going in-depth about politics, but it would be wrong for me not to mention that there's a centuries-long history of war and bloodshed on both sides, culminating with the Japanese colonization of Korea in the early 20th century that lasted until 1945 in which the Imperial Japanese Army brutally repressed the Korean people. From 1921 to 1940, Korean schools even participated in the annual Japanese high school baseball Koshien tournament. I also need to point out that this dark period of history remains a hot button topic in both countries to this very day as many in Japanese leadership have downplayed or outright denied Japan's crimes during the Second World War, including the comfort woman system of sexual slavery. Zainichi Koreans are also the second largest ethnic minority group in Japan today after Chinese. So when Team Korea planted the South Korean flag on the mound after defeating Japan in 2009, you can imagine the kind of controversy it generated. Again, this is a baseball channel, so I don't like getting into politics, but I feel this is absolutely necessary information to understand any sports rivalry like this. Now, regarding the baseball aspect of things, the first time Japan and Korea met on an international level with professional rather than amateur players was the 1999 Asian Baseball Championship, effectively the qualification tournament for the 2000 Sydney Olympics. And this is the de facto starting point of the modern Japan-Korea baseball rivalry. Just a disclaimer, I know Japanese but not Korean, so excuse me for butchering the names throughout this video. Japan took an early 2-0 lead in the 4th inning, but Korea came back with a big 6th inning and held on to win 5-3. So Korea will always have the bragging rights to winning the first major matchup between these two great rivals. Almost exactly one year later, the sides met again, this time in the preliminary round of the Sydney Games. Daisuke Matsuzaka, coming off a Pacific League Rookie of the Year award, surrendered four runs in the first inning, including a two-run shot to the Korean GOAT, Lee sung Yup. Japan caught up in the seventh inning with a So Taguchi RBI knock to tie the game at five, but Korea went on to score two runs in the tenth inning as Korea got the better of Japan, 7-6 in extras. Both teams lost in the semifinals to set up a rematch in the bronze medal game, where once again Korea got the better of Japan, 3-1 to win the bronze medal. So Korea defeated Japan in each of their first three matchups and even prevented them from winning an Olympic medal. The rivalry was not off to a good start for Japan. But Japan finally got some sweet revenge in 2003 as they shut out Korea 2-0 off a very strong four-pitcher relay by Tsuyoshi Wada, Hiroki Kuroda, Hitoki Iwase, and Masahide Kobayashi. This loss would cost Korea their bid at the 2004 Athens Games, as they were unable to qualify. Japan would then go on to win a bronze medal in Athens. So the rivals would not meet again until the 2006 World Baseball Classic, the inaugural WBC tournament. Both Japan and Korea were in Pool A, along with China and Chinese Taipei. As expected, Japan and Korea both won their first two games, and the two met on March 5th at Tokyo Dome in front of a crowd of 40,000 to determine the winner of the pool. Japan got off to an early lead against Kim Sun-woo with a Nobuhiko Matsunaga RBI infield single in the first inning and a Muninori Kawasaki solo shot in the second inning to go up 2-0. Japan had a huge bases loaded opportunity to tack on in the fourth, but Lee Jin Young saved Korea with a diving catch in right field. That shifted the momentum to the Korean side as they finally scored against Shun Watanabe in the fifth inning to get within one. The score remained that way until the eighth inning when, once again, Lee Sung Yup hit a come from behind two run bomb off reliever Hirotoshi Ishii to put Korea in front three to two. 
Veteran Chanho Park sealed the deal in the ninth as Ichiro popped up to end the game and Korea topped the pool. In the second round, Japan and Korea were drawn together again, this time in Anaheim with the United States and Mexico. Korea won their first two games against the USA and Mexico to guarantee themselves a spot in the semis, but Japan lost to the USA. This meant that Japan would probably have to beat Korea if they wanted to avoid elimination. The game was scoreless all the way until the 8th inning when Korea put together a rally against reliever Toshiya Sugiuchi. Elite closer Kyuji Fujikawa, who was in his early prime at this point, entered the game to try to escape the jam, but veteran Lee jung Bum, nicknamed the Korean Ichiro, singled up the middle to give Korea a 2-0 lead. Tsuyoshi Nishioka hit a solo shot in the ninth to bring the game within one, but Oh sung Hwan, aka the final boss, shut the door and Korea stormed the field in celebration. Ichiro was visibly frustrated as Japan's tournament was likely done. If USA beat Mexico as expected, Japan would be eliminated. But the following night, the Mexicans upset the Americans by a score of 2-1 meaning that Japan's tournament life was resurrected as three teams in the pool finished tied with a 1-2 record, but Japan had the best run differential, allowing them to advance to the semis. So, just three days after Korea thought they had knocked out Japan, and maybe prematurely celebrated, they were down in San Diego for their most important matchup yet. And just like the first two games of this tournament, it started out as a pitcher's duel as Koji Uehara tossed seven shutout innings, and Jay Wong So threw five shutout frames. But after Korea had contained the Japanese offense so well all tournament, the Samurai finally broke through in the seventh inning, putting up five runs against Jun Byung Do and Kim Byung Hyun, whose best days were well behind him. Japan tacked on two more runs in the eighth to make it six to nothing, and Akinori Otsuka struck out the side in the ninth as Japan finally defeated Korea and advanced to the finals. Now, this result was pretty controversial. Korea was undefeated until this one loss, whereas Japan had lost three games already this tournament. So, why should Korea be eliminated? Well, that's the way a single elimination tournament is set up, and while it was absolutely not fair, Japan did win when it mattered most. Never forget though, if it weren't for Mexico, this game would never have even happened. So, as Korea packed their bags to go home, all they could do was watch on as Japan defeated Cuba 10-6 in the championship game to win the inaugural World Baseball Classic. The next time the sides met was the 2007 Asian Baseball Championship, which once again is basically the qualification tournament for the Olympics. Japan won 4-3 this time with RBI hits from Saburo Omura in the second inning, Shinosuke Abe in the third inning, and Atsunori Inaba in the eighth inning. Inaba would go on to become the manager of Samurai Japan after 2013. Despite the loss, Korea was still able to qualify for the 2008 Beijing Olympics where they absolutely dominated the competition, going undefeated throughout the entire tournament to take home the gold medal. This perfect run included a 5-3 win against Japan in the preliminary round and a 6-2 win in the semifinals. Japan had a 2-0 lead in both games but were unable to hold on. Hitoki Iwase, widely regarded as the best closer in Japanese history, took the L in both games, surrendering a devastating two-run shot to who else but Lee sung Yup in the eighth inning of the semis. After returning to Japan, many nationalistic fans were furious with Iwate for the poor showing against Korea, even sending him death threats. The losses destroyed Iwate's confidence so much that he decided to stop pursuing a potential MLB contract. Going into the 2009 World Baseball Classic then, Korea was leading this head-to-head -head matchup and had a gold medal to show for it. But the biggest prize, the WBC trophy, was in Japan's hands. So Korea obviously wanted to prevent Japan from defending their title as they were once again drawn into the same pool in Tokyo. This tournament was set up a bit differently though, so rather than a typical round-robin pool, it was a double elimination bracket and two losses would result in elimination, whereas two wins would guarantee a spot in the next round. Japan defeated China while Korea defeated Chinese Taipei in the first round to set up a Japan-Korea matchup for a spot in the next round. Both teams had their ace on the mound with 2006 WBC MVP Daisuke Masazaka going up against the 20-year-old phenom Kim Kwang-hyun, who is still probably Korea's best pitcher in 2023. 
But in this particular game, he did not have his best stuff as Japan completely shelled him for 7 hits and 8 earned runs in just an inning and a third. The game was over before Korea could blink as Japan's offense exploded for 14 hits and 14 runs in just 7 frames to mercy rule Korea. But Japan probably should have taken their foot off the gas because they completely reinvigorated the Korean side to a 14-0 mercy rule of their own against China in the lower bracket and then a 1-0 win in a rematch against Japan in the Pool A seeding game. Now, Japan's spot in the next round was already booked at this point, but it was a very impressive turnaround for the Korean pitching staff to shut out Japan just two days after being mercy ruled, even if this game didn't actually mean that much. In the following round played in San Diego, Japan and Korea were drawn together with Mexico and Cuba. Both Asian squads got through their Latin counterparts with relative ease in the opening games and once again matched up for a third time this tournament. Yu Darvish, who was coming off back-to-back sub-2 ERA seasons with the Fighters, had a rare clunker, allowing three runs in the first inning, while his opponent, Bung Jung Kyun, who pitched very well against Japan in the previous game, went five and a third strong, allowing just one run. Japan's offense was once again shut down by Korea as Lim Chung Young got his second save in as many opportunities against Japan to seal a 4-1 scoreline. So this time, Japan was sent to the lower bracket where they defeated Cuba in a rematch of the 2006 finals. At this point, both Japan and Korea had their spots in Los Angeles for the semifinals booked, but they played one more time to decide the seeding. The game was tied at 2 until the 8th inning, but Japan finally cracked the Korean defense and put up 4 runs in the final 2 innings to win 6-2. But if you know anything about these two teams, it's that they are inseparable like magnets. So of course, Japan defeated USA in the semis and Korea defeated a very formidable Venezuelan side to set up a Japan vs. Korea championship game. This was the fifth time in just this tournament that the two rivals were meeting, and going into this game, the series was all even at two apiece. You could make an entire video about just this one game, but I'll go over just the highlights. Bung Jung Hyun, who had two wins against Japan this tournament, took the hill for Korea, while Hisashi Iwakuma got the start for Japan because ace Daisuke Matsuzaka had pitched in the semis. Ichiro led off the game with a single, but Japan was unable to score in the first. In the third inning, with runners on the corner and one out, first baseman Michihiro Ogasawara came through with an RBI knock to put Japan in front, but with the bases loaded and a chance to break the game open, Kenta Kurihara grounded into a double play. Iwakuma was cruising through the first four innings, only allowing one hit, but on the first pitch of the fifth inning, Shin Shu Chu, who was playing with Cleveland at the time, hit a solo shot to center to tie the game. Later that inning, Ko Young Min hit what appeared to be a double to left, but Seiichi Uchikawa, who was essentially a first baseman playing out of position, made an excellent sliding stop and throw to gun him at second. In the seventh inning, Japan broke the deadlock with three straight singles from Yasuyuki Kataoka Ichiro and Hiroyuki Nakajima, and they added one more in the eighth with an Akinori Iwamura sacrifice fly. So things were looking pretty good for Japan, up by two runs with just six more outs to collect. But with Iwakuma's pitch count getting up to the 90s, Lee Bum Ho led off the eighth with a double, Ko Young Min moved him along, and Lee Dae Ho hit a sack fly to bring him home. Then, in the bottom of the ninth, with the score 3-2, Yu Darvish entered the game. Obviously, he's typically a starter, but Japan was relying on him late in this tournament to close as Kyuji Fujikawa was not in great form. Unfortunately for Japan, Darvish was pretty erratic this time out, surrendering back-to-back -back walks before Lee Bum Ho came through with a clutch RBI single with two outs to tie the game at three. Darvish was able to escape the jam, but with another hit, Korea could have walked it off right then and there. In the top of the 10th, Japan put together a big rally, culminating with Ichiro's fourth hit of the night to drive in two. Darvish walked the leadoff runner in the bottom of the 10th to bring the tying run to the plate again, but he got the next three batters out, ending the game with a strikeout against Jung Kyun Woo, leading to this iconic scene that is still played back on all sorts of Japanese media today. A lot of current players on Samurai Japan were just kids when they were watching this, but they remember it very fondly. Japan had done it. They not only defeated their rivals in their biggest game yet, 
but they successfully defended the World Baseball Classic crown. As for Korea, it was a valiant effort, but they fell just short in what is still the most contested WBC final to this day. And this is absolutely the climax of the Japan-Korea baseball rivalry. Things have been a lot more quiet in the last decade and a half. Baseball wasn't played at the London or Rio Olympics, and Korea had early exits at both the 2013 and 2017 World Baseball Classics. But a new tournament called the Premier 12 began in 2015. MLB players do not participate in the Premier 12, but as with everything baseball related, Japan and Korea take it very seriously, and they send their best players from NPB and KBO. So it seemed inevitable that something would go down between these two rivals, and sure enough, it did. Japan defeated Korea 5-0 in the opening Group B matchup played at the Sapporo Dome, but a few weeks later they met again in the semifinals at Tokyo Dome. Shohei Otani threw an absolute gem. He was dominant, throwing 7 innings of one hit ball with 11 punch outs topping out at 100 miles per hour. And this was Otani's very last time in a Samurai Japan uniform until 2023. So Japan was up 3 to nothing, and everything seemed to be going perfectly. But in the ninth inning, it all fell apart. Takahiro Norimoto, a traditional starter, pitched a clean eighth, but went back for a second inning of work and just totally lost his stuff. His eventual relievers, Yuki Matsui and Hirotoshi Masui, were not great either as Lee Dae-ho delivered the game-winning hit, and Korea scored four runs in the top of the ninth, mounting an incredible comeback victory to shock Japan into elimination. Japan went on to beat Mexico for the bronze medal, while Korea defeated USA to win gold. So, Korea was finally able to get revenge for 2009. But of course, the story of this rivalry is just both sides throwing constant punches at one another until the end of time, so it wasn't long before Japan once again got their own revenge, defeating Korea in the Super Round of the 2019 Premier 12 by a score of 10-8, and then defeating them once more in the championship game 5-3 at Tokyo Dome. Korea had scored three runs in the first against Shun Yamaguchi, but Tetsuto Yamada had the most memorable moment in the game, hitting a three-run home run in the second against Young Hyun Jung to flip the score, and Japan never looked back. Yamada also delivered the killer blow in the eighth inning in the semifinals of the Tokyo Olympics as baseball was finally brought back, and Japan went on to win that game and the final to take home gold. In my opinion though, the Olympics were pretty anticlimactic because there were no fans in the crowd, so this Japanese victory against Korea did not really have the same feel to it, although it was Atsunori Inaba's final tournament as manager, so it did have a lot of symbolic significance. Now, if I'm counting correctly, every single game that the Japanese and Korean senior national teams have played in the Asian Baseball Championship, Olympics, World Baseball Classic, and Premier 12 since 1999, their head-to-head -head record comes out to 10 and 10 in 20 matches. In just the WBC, they're 4 and 4. So they are dead even, and you bet your ass this upcoming 2023 WBC matchup is a big deal. It's going to be played on March 10th at 7 p.m. local time at Tokyo Dome. That's 5 a.m. Eastern time or 2 a.m. Pacific time for those of you in North America. The projected pitchers will be Yu Darvish versus Ko Chung Mo. I can't wait. Special thanks to my patrons, Japanball.com, Chris J, Jonathan Greenberg, Hinosato Yaku, Poker Pack Rat, Corgi Racing, Anthony Pang, Jake Royce, Marcus Hill, Yua Bird, Ryan Fox, Jeff W, Char Asnable, Juan Jose Sanchez Bracamontes, Christopher Woods, Samantha Garave, Yuki Summerine, Kud, Jem Morelos, Gabriel Foss, Kurt Berglund, Eduardo Granados, Kotaro Imahayashi Kim, J1, Tom Musa, Mike Braun, Lucas Bora, Stu22, Alex Irish, Marty Mercury, PBCow98, Tokyo Kyojin Fan, Dave Hackerson, Brainlet Wojak, Riku, Joe Hironaka, Joey Mellows, C. McDonald, and Baseball Enser. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more MPB and WBC content in English.